is a brief note to let you know that the video you're about to watch is not complete. Um, it sort of manages to cover getting the diff in, but the whole sequence of putting the axles in, um, the phone ran out of storage and it didn't record it. There's nothing I can do about it, so I do apologise for that, but it did get uh, me installing the diff centre. Um, the problem I had was that if you watch the last video, it was making a noise and it's very hard to diagnose because there, everything's metal under there and the sound travels through the metal. And it's really hard to, to diagnose. So um, I started the car. I did try to film this, but it, as I said, it didn't come out. So I started the car, put it in gear and ran it once I put the axles in and it was quiet until I went in the garage and then I started hearing the same noise and I went back out and got onto the car. It looks like it had nothing to do with the diff, which I'm pretty happy about because I can put my limited slip back in. And um, I need some new drive shafts by the look of it, mainly the left hand one. But yeah, that's all that happened. That's what you missed. Um, again, I apologize. I've cleared a fair bit of storage on this phone now, so it should be right for a while. It just had all the old videos on it. Don't take up too much room. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and um, see you all in the next one. Bye. Okay, g'day everyone. Um, welcome to a continuation of a exciting episode from the last episode where I took the diff out. So this is where we're at. I'm going to put my other single spinner diff in, 3.07 still, so I don't have to change anything. So I'm just going to film that. Um, I'll probably speed it up. So I talked enough crap in the last one. So um, Then I might show you, I'm going to, I've got, a, I've got a spare drive shaft, so I'm going to cannibalise that and see if I can re-grease the unis in that, because I really... I don't know where the noise was coming from still. The, these two rear bearings feel all right to me. Um, the shafts are sticking on the inner uni a little bit. So I'm going to have a look at them and see if I can just re-grease them and seal the boot up again. Um, the diff feels all right to me. I thought something might have come loose. But... It actually feels pretty good so I don't want to just put all the same stuff back in so I'm just going to put my other diff in because I know that's really quiet and I'll see if I can repair the drive shafts a bit or lube them up a bit but they don't have um, any play in them or anything so I don't know it, you know it I'd what I'm thinking at the moment is it probably was coming from the diff. Something's happened, I don't know what. Like I said, the car sat for three weeks. It was fine before that. I've had the diff in for like a few years now and I've been all over the place and never had a drama with it. So this is a bit of a mystery to me. If anyone's got any ideas, just let me know in the comments. Um, but I'm just going to work through and see... I want to use the same drive shafts. Um, if I still get the noise, then I'll pull this diff back out and put the limited slip back in. But anyway, we better get going because I've talked enough. Okay, just to bring you up the speed on this slow moving project. Um, the trusty old spanner I showed you in the last video. Bloody magic, this thing. Really good for doing these diffs. I'm going to use that to get some tension on it but I'm going to try and speed things up I've got a ratchet one too so probably not much talking throughout this I've got the jack on a diff you probably can't see that at the moment what am I talking about I have the diff on a jack and I'm going to jack it up and there's the um, bolts so we'll just get started but I'll be working on the other side so if you hear me grunting and groaning, don't be alarmed. Right, uh. Get the 
it's not very stable but once you get it up there you can sort of jam it against the these are the joys of working on your own so once you get it up here it sort of you can sort of keep it up there around the cradle and it can't really roll off the jack but now that I've said that it probably will all right so I'm going for the back ones first that one's gone straight in that was pretty good easy peasy now it's probably going to be a bit of manipulation here I haven't edited the last video yet, the one I did yesterday, so I just had a quick look at it, and I reckon it's a bit long, but look, I'm sorry, but I can't help myself, so it's just going to be long. Okay, so I've got the two back bolts in. I'm just going to um, try, I've got to go around the other side and I'll get in front of this jack. Alright, so it's probably going to need to go up a bit more, but... Really needs to go forward. It's very difficult because I'm working on an incline, which isn't ideal. So I'm just going to hold that up and see if I can get this started. I think I'm pretty sure I've got that one started. You know, I had an idea of using the ratchet spinner, but now I know why I couldn't last time, so I don't think there's enough room to actually get the head of the ring spinner on there. I do so many jobs that even the ones I've done before when you go back you sort of get reminded of things that I should have remembered but I didn't just want to make sure that I don't cross through these this one is not oh yeah that's better that's better it's really easy to cross through them because you think, oh yeah, I've got it started and you start winding them up. No, that one's good. And that one's good. I'll give this ring spanner a go, but I think the head of it's too... I don't know. It works. Hallelujah. You ought to say that and the ring spanner will fall apart or something. I'm a glass half empty bloke, aren't I? No, it needs to be screwed in by hand a bit more now. I can't get the spanner off. It's just a bit loose for the ratchet to work. Alright, now we should be right. I probably didn't need to worry about it. Well, I'm sort of glad I did, eh? Righto, that one's up. 
Let me see. Just tighten them up by hand as much as I can. They're going, they're going in pretty good. Like I said, this diff's been in here before. I bought it years ago off a bloke. He actually said it was a limited slip, but it's not. It's amazing how many people don't know how to check for a limited slip diff. I even saw these blokes hack shop garage if anyone watches them. And they bought a diff and they put it in and they and it wasn't a limited slip and they didn't know they just did not know how to check for it they do now all right i'm just going to do these nip these up i don't know if you blokes know how to check so i'll i'll, I'll show you i'll show you what an open diff does Just check that the camera's in the right spot first and then I'll show you. Really, rule of thumb is, open diff, you turn your tail shaft yoke at the front and you, your two drives, your axles, should spin in opposite directions or only one will spin. So if you look at this one, the one on my side's no, you just hold it. So you can hold one and still spin it. With a limited slip, they will both go forward. See, this one's this one's not doing the reverse thing like the old banjo diffs do in old Holdens. But, so that's why he thought he had a limited slip, because they're both going forward. But if you, if you can hold one side and still spin it really easily, then it's an open diff. And a limited slip, they're both locked. So if you hold one side, you won't be able to spin it. But if you can, if, it's, if it is a limited slip and you can, then the clutch is a rat shit. So, okay. Uh, I'm gonna leave that like that for now. I'll probably get this out of the way. And we'll tighten them up. killed myself but it's tight. I'm not going for mega tight. Like I said I've never had anything fall out yet. That's your diff in. All right, so there, there won't be a hell of a lot more happening under here until I inspect these drive shafts. So I don't know if I'll do any more on this video or not. So we'll see how we go. I'll try and show you a bit on the drive shafts actually, but I'll just stop filming now. Um, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay, this is where we're at. I've just undone the band on there and I'm going to re-grease. This is just a spare one, but I'm going to try and re-grease mine in there and then seal it back up. So that's the plan. There's no need to sort of video that. Um, there's no real need to sort of video the axles going in I don't think but um that's the plan I might do a bit of filming at the end see if I've got no noise and then that'll be it for this one righto so as you can see I've um re-greased the inner CV joint that's the one that was mucking up the outside ones are alright 
and they seem to be a lot better and just put the boot back on and re-strapped it so now I'll whack one in I'll film that and um, that might do for this video I think Right, I will start putting one of these axles in using the same tools as yesterday I've got the breaker bar here and the normal ratchet my 8mm hex drive and I'll grab one of these and we'll see if we can get it back in. Alright. So we'll just line a couple up. get it all started I'll bolt it all in loose until I get it all lined up Not cooperating. Hang on, I'll try the top. I'll try two at the top. like those two are in so that means these two should go in for some reason right, it started we'll start this one off okay Gonna grab an extension so I can. I've got the breaker bar here, so I'll tighten them up with that bit. I'm not going to do that up real tight, I just want to nip them up until I get them all in. Like I said yesterday, you'll, I've got the handbrake on at the moment, but you will have to let it off and turn it because this axle shaft is actually in the way. I can't get I can't get this piece in straight, this socket. So you don't ever tighten them up unless you get it in there properly. 
like that. If it's on an angle or it's not in there properly, you'll strip the middle of it. Made a mistake already because uh, th this this one's got to go around a bit more. Should have gone around one hole. Actually, I'll probably when I put the top one on, I should have been looking what I was doing. But it, the top one's already done up, so I'll move this one. This one should be around there. up they're not very hard to do they're very easy it's just once once you've sort of cracked them like I said if they haven't been out before they're very hard to get undone but I've never taken this side off and I've got a big breaker bar king chrome ratchet breaker bar that I got from Bunnings I think it was about 90 bucks well worth the money if you're gonna do stuff like this well worth the money and they came out pretty easy but you know I've been down the wrecking yard and I went to take a diff out once and you know when you're down there you can't take everything with you so and some of them were that hard I just went oh bugger it I always I always have big plans when I go down that wrecking yard and I'll start taking something out. I was going to remove these rear control arms out of out of a ute down there. I just have them as spare to put the bushes in, you know. But I got down there and started it and went, oh, stuff this. I don't want to stay here doing this. So I'll, I'll give it up. All right. I'll get this last one in. And then I might sort of get some of the inner ones in because I'll I'll have to be I'll have to spin the shaft around so I might as well do both on at once. Although this one's on the opposite side, so all right. So they're just they're just nipped up for now. So this one is the one, oh, don't tell me I've buggered up, okay, alright so I need to get this diff up, so I'll just grab the jack. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'll spin this around so you can see what I'm doing. I didn't jack the diff up and put the rear mount on. I just put the diff in. See that mount? So I'll find the bolts. He says, there's one, there's two. I always put the bolts in the lid of me socket set. And they were 13s, I think. That 
me have a look. I'm pretty sure they were 13, yeah. Everything's 13. Commodore, 13. All right. I've said that before, haven't I? Okay. Make sure we don't want to be cross-threading shit, so... sure whether this is lined up properly. Yeah, that one's alright. I know that one's good. And that one's good. So I'll do those. I'll do that side up first. Grab the ratchet. A bit disappointed in all this. I, I really, the car came from the factory with a slippery diff. 3.46, I think. And I really don't want to run around with an open diff in it, but you know, all it means is that I'm going to be doing this again later. It's a bit of a worry when you when you've already had the diff apart and it starts making a noise. So this should tell me whether it was a diff or not. Although I don't think it was the um, drive shafts. They weren't that bad. I can't see how they would have been doing it, but... Okay. That one's done. Yeah, I know. Use a rattle gun. I could have used a rattle gun, but... Very easy to cross-red stuff like that. I really don't want to cross-thread anything that bolts into the frame of the car. I think they're okay. So you probably fast forward. I haven't got the tail shaft on yet, as you can see. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, um, just had a bit of a development. I know I signed off and everything, but. I've had a bit of a development. I actually left the car running for a while with the wheels going and the noise is back. So it sounds like um, the left hand rear inner CV joint is making a noise. So after all of that shit, um, I'm going to change the axles. So what I will do short term. I'll leave that diff in there because I know that's a good diff and it's quiet. Um, 
and I'll get some new drive shafts. And if that works, then that bloody slippery diff is going back in. But I won't. I'm not going to bother filming it, you know. You just saw the, the whole episode of it. It's not hard. Like, you, if you've done it before, or once you know what you're doing, you can do it in an hour. You can have the old one out and the new one in. It's it's If you're not changing your shafts, you're just changing a diff centre, you can do it in an hour. Easy. So... But if you're working with me, just allow half a day, and you'll be right. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you that update. Um, all that work, and I've achieved nothing. I, I've lost a limited slip diff, so I've done well. And now I've got to go and work on the Adventurer, because the rear electric window is just stuffed up. So I think it's broken something inside the door, so... I don't think that's, um, I don't really think I'll film that. I, I can't see anything too exciting, you know, about doing it. If I, if I didn't have these two videos, I, you know, at the time of recording this, I still haven't posted the first video. So I've got enough to do. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you an update. And just to let you know, I've achieved nothing. Okay. See you later.